Right, episode 16, my guest today. If you're a Britain's Got Talent fan and you remember the Mersey Girls, you'll definitely remember <laughs> my guest today, Julia Carlisle. How are you? I'm good. How yeah? are you? Yeah, yes. good. Thanks for coming on. Thanks for having me. So, funnily enough, we were just talking about your boyfriend where he trains. Obviously, right. Matty Holmes told me about you. Oh, right. Yeah, oh, and told yeah. Me your story. And then, obviously, I'd seen your story. So, um, I've watched all, like, I hadn't watched Britain's Got Talent a long time ago. So, I've watched all your stuff and wow, you've got a wicked story. Like, it's it's uh, unbelievable. It's like, like, it's mental. It is crazy. Like, it doesn't feel like it was me when I think about it. Really? No. Why not? It's like, like, I don't feel, feel like I've gone through any of that. Really? I do want to think of it. I'm like, that. that's sick. And then I'm like, oh, that was me. Yeah, it's mad. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, it's, it's a so, hell of a story. It's so, like, just crazy story. So were you, so for people who don't know who are watching, like, can you just tell us, obviously, your background to what the situation was and yeah. you were born with this condition, Scoliosis. right? Scoliosis. Yeah. yeah. So I've had it since I was six and it was right. like in and out of hospitals. Oh, so were you born with forever. it? It's developed. Well, they don't know like when I got it. Oh, right. Okay. But it's it's cool because it's not cool. But I, <laughs> <laughs> but I had a cough. And I went to the doctor. You never find it when you're six. It's normally when you're like older. Oh, really? Yeah, but I had a cough. Went to the doctors. They like were like listening to my back and made me bend over. And they were like, oh my gosh, there's a curve in her spine. So then if I didn't notice it then, I would also, have been... Also, they couldn't tell from just by oh, looking worse. at you. They just noticed that because from this cough that you had this. Yeah. Because it usually like, it was hardly noticeable then. And oh, so really? then I had like a, I had back braces from like age seven all the way till 15 Yeah. in school and everything. It was so hard. Really? Yeah. Like thick, chunky braces. And what was that to do, designed to do to, to, to stop the curve? Or it was stop meant it to with? stop it. But right. like, like no matter what I did for my spine, it just, nothing would hold it. Really? So no, I've tried like four different back braces and it's always just like, nope. Like my spine is just determined to really? curve, but I'm like <laughs> more determined to like not let it. Really? Yeah, yeah. But then I got like, I stopped wearing the brace, you know, when you're like, like a teenager. Yeah. And what happened? Did that make it a lot yeah. worse? Oh, it just went really, really bad. And then they were like, you need surgery, basically. That's mad, isn't it? Mm. So I like had my surgery booked when I went on BGT. Wow. So how long have you been dancing? Have you been dancing since you were little? Two years old, yeah. Really? Yeah. So like... How did you cope with dancing with obviously the condition? Oh, I don't, I don't know. Like my surgeons were like... I was like doing backflips with this 100 degree curve. And my surgeons were like, how, how are you doing this? I was like, I don't know. Like it didn't bother me at all. No pain or nothing? No. It's on her like... People have like 50 degree curves and they're like, oh, I go to school and it's painful. But I was just, I was vibing. Really? I, just, I just didn't, I just didn't really like, you. I just, I was fine really. Really? Yeah. What was it like in school? Oh, it was like one of my teachers made a comment to me about the brace and. Really? And then it was that that made me stop. Yeah. Saying what? Saying that I, say? it made me look fat. Shut and then I just, I just never wore it again. Really? Yeah. Fucking hell. How old were you? I think I was like 14, 15. It's my French teacher. Um, just, <laughs> but, Needs the sack if yeah. she's still there. <laughs> no, but, um, and then like my friends were nice, but it was like people weren't, no one was really that supportive of like any of the dancing. And my friends were, but like people in school was that supportive of any of it really. Really? No, but I didn't really. You can't let it get to you no you can't let it affect you like that but you didn't obviously because you carried on doing it yeah well yeah well it's just what I loved so yeah like even when I went on BGT and like stuff like it wasn't you'd expect people to be like oh well done they were just like like yeah people like just speaking about it making fun of it but I just didn't care I was just really how did the BGT thing come out did you apply for it or did you get noticed or well, we've tried to go on BGT about five or six times. Not not as that group. Like with my dance school, we tried singing. Oh, really? Yeah, we oh so many times, and then any chat, anything to get on it. Yeah, <laughs> just a bit desperate to go. No, it was like we'd, we'd watched it every year, and we were like, "Come on!" Yeah. And then it's just so unlikely that you're going to get on. Really? Well, I thought so. Yeah. When you're auditioning, it's just thousands of people. You're just like, right? What? What? Well, like, you know, I'm just a kid from the Wirral. Yeah. Um, and then this time, it did feel different though when we applied this time because I had my surgery booked. We were like, this is the last time now. Did you think yeah. that you, obviously before you, once you booked your surgery and you knew you're going Britain's Got Talent, yeah. were you worried that it was going to affect Britain's Got Talent? 
Because, or was it booked way after it? It was literally like, say if we got through to the final, yeah. it was booked the month after the final. So we were like, do like, if we get on, we do BGT, it's this great thing. And then you've done a good thing before surgery. But yeah. it obviously didn't happen like that in the end. Yeah. So go on, talk me through what happened. How did it, how did it come out? What happened? Let's go. It's such a well in. Yeah. So I, I was like, hey, like, let's get the surgery. And I wouldn't be able to dance after it. So it's Ever like, again? So it's the one I've had now. But it's obviously so much has got happened like from then and now. But I, I've had that one like five months ago. Really? Yeah. But anyway, so... Yeah, let's go back. Let's go back. It's like, it's so long winded. It's all right, you're here. <laughs> right, <laughs> so I get for. me coffee. It was so basically. <laughs> no, we... Um, so we, we got through and then we went on like, I think it was this morning. Oh, good morning, Britain. Mm. One of them. And they mentioned like, oh, well, there's a surgery in America, you know, that you can dance after. And I was like, well, if we win, we'd love to put the money towards that. So we were always like, that was our dream to win and get that surgery in America so I can dance. And then we didn't win, obviously, but after our final dance in the finals, I just, I was just like, oh, that went sick, was walking up the stairs. And then I think the girls were like, Julia, someone's here to speak to you. I just turned around and Simon Cow was like, there and I was like hello and there was rumors that he'd said he's gonna pay for it for me and he just said basically it's true and I just started crying really and my mum knew my mum already knew for like the whole day and they were like he was like please don't tell Julia because I want to tell her oh myself my God, I know wow. I know and then literally a month later I was flying to America and he paid for your surgery mm. he didn't not even... if you would say Simon Cowell paid for my <laughs> surgery so I could dance again he didn't even scream and shout about it though, did he? He's not like that, don't no. you, is he? I mean, clearly he's not, but I mean, that's the best thing about it. It's people who do acts of kindness and not, not they're not seeking anything in return mm, for it, you know? Yeah, well, they wanted to like do a documentary of my surgery and he was like, and, and they wanted me to go on this morning, the morning of my surgery from America. And he was like, no, she's not doing that. Like, really? she, Yeah, he was just wow. amazing. He didn't have to do it. No. Do you know what he says to me? So like, every time I see him, not that I don't see him. Cash like, you know. Every time I see <laughs> I was like, oh, no, like he's inviting me to like the shows and stuff. Every yeah. time I see him, I'm like, you've changed my life. Because he has. Yeah. And he was, he's always going, you've changed man. And I'm always like, what? That's crazy. That's mad, isn't it's it? A, yeah, it's crazy. He's like, it, yeah, it must feel amazing for him to have done that for you. But like, like I, it's, it's literally changed your life, hasn't it? Yeah. Well, I would have just like, like, you know what it's like to like live your dream because mm. you you do it, yeah. don't you? You like yeah. live your dream every day as work. Yeah. And I got to do that for like a solid like two, three years after Britain's Got Talent. Yeah. And that's because <sighs> of that surgery. Yeah. I got to dance around the country with like my best friends. Really? Yeah. For two years. Just, and I want to be able to do any of that. That's mad. So what was the surgery you were booked in for after Britain's um, Got Talent that obviously wasn't the one that Simon paid for? Spinal fusion. So, so what that what would that have done? So like from top to bottom fuse your spine completely, like fuse the bone to metal so you can't move. I was gonna say that would have really limited your movement then. Yeah. And that's but, why you wouldn't be able to dance again. Yeah. And then the one in America, like it wasn't as good correction of the curve, but I was able to like do whatever I wanted. Wow, that's mad, isn't it? Mm. So if you if you won Britain's Got Talent, before, when obviously before yeah. you got what you did and you decided as a group that if we won, we were going to put the money together and pay for your surgery, it was for the one where they fuse your spine, was it? Or was if it? we were going to pay? Yeah. No, so the one where you fuse is just on the NHS. Right, okay. And then it was the one in America. There's a lot of money that you can dance after. Really? Yes, a lot of money. Like we would never have been able to get that ourselves. That's mental, isn't it? Yeah, they actually used to do it in the UK and then they got rid of it. Really? Why is that? Because there's not enough, like, long-term evidence or something. But the, it doesn't matter because you can literally, like, well, I've had it done now because I've obviously had the other surgery now. You can go in and take it out. But once you've had fusion, it's, like, done for life. You can't ever unfuse your spine. Really? Mm. Is this is this a common thing, this condition you have? No, it is, you know. Like, is you've it? probably got it. What? <laughs> no, like everyone. Don't say that. <laughs> I don't go around to that, but I've just diagnosed Simon. you with. <laughs> Call me. <laughs> um, no, so like it's like one in forty have like a slight curve. Really? Yeah, but mine was just so like I don't know. My, mine was so dramatic. Really? My curve, my spine is just like 
just dramatic. There was no need for how big the curve was, but that must have been difficult when you're like obviously you knew when you were six you found mm. out this this condition, but going through like to your teenage years, like and it seeing it getting worse, that must have been scary for you. Yeah, well my so my torso, like as it curved, like kept shrinking. Right. Do you know what I mean? Because like as it curved, it like was getting Yeah, I saw, I saw some of your pictures. Oh, it's, it's mad the horrible, difference. Horrible, isn't it? No, it's just it's just different. It's just mental now. How yeah. different it is now. I, I I like wouldn't. So I'd be in dance class and would wear like massive. People can probably like relate to that. Like I'd wear hoodies and I'd be dripping with sweat and I just wouldn't take my top off. Really, I just, would not have worn this. Just really body conscious and that. Yeah, way. well, I couldn't. And like high waisted jeans because my body was like that big. The high waisted jeans would go like up to here. I had like no torso. Right. But everyone's like, you look fine. You look fine. And then. Have you seen the picture in, in my bikini on my Instagram? Yeah, the one next to it. Yeah, I've yeah. seen the, the one next to it. Like, yeah. the difference is incredible. I'm like, why didn't anyone tell me? Like, someone needed to say, you look, like, no terrible. One would, you like, didn't look it, terrible. It no was, one would say that. Like, you had the condition. It's yeah, just, just one it's just of those like, things, I didn't realise it was as bad as it was until now. Until, and, like, pff, I'm a lot happier now, but I can't, obviously, dance as much. So what, is that you can't dance as much now? Or can yeah. you dance at all? Or I can dance like clubs yeah <laughs> so, or like I, 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 I like I'm going to dance after this but I'll yeah. just have to watch and then oh really do my own little thing yeah but it, it takes a year till I can do anything anyway it's will, will you be able to dance how you did again <laughs> never again no but it's just a choice I had to make I like I was so unhappy with my body yeah and like everyone was saying that I should like your mental health yeah and dancing matters more than like just what you look like, but it didn't to me. Yeah. Like I hated it. And even though I can't dance as well now, I'm so much happier. Yeah. Confident. Well, that's it. That changes your life in itself, doesn't it? Because And it opens a lot of doors for you as well. Yeah. It's so easy for people to say like, oh, you look fine. But if you, every time you look in the mirror, or every time you get ready to go out and you just feel like rubbish in yourself, it's not, it's yeah. not a way to live. And I knew that there was, even though this was like, like 25% chance or something of paralysis with this. Was there? Yeah. And just, it was so complicated, my surgery. Like, I was going to say, it, whenever you hear about spines being operated on, it's, there's a massive You don't want to go there, do no. you? Yeah. No. He had to break my spine as well. I was going to say, talk me through the like the, the operations. And stuff. So I had like, two. In total, you've had two? No, I've had four. Yeah, I was going to say, I thought you'd had more. No, I yeah. Four in America. No, two in America. Right. Two here. And what were they all... What was the aim with them all? Why have you had to have four? Well, I was meant to grow after the American one. Because the, like, the goal is they put it in and then you grow. And as you grow, the, like, the screws and the rods like straighten. I just didn't grow. Right. I just, I just didn't grow. So then it, instead of coming like, to the side, my spine started to come you know, like a hunchback outwards. How old were you? 15. And you didn't grow? I didn't grow. And they, right, do you know there's a thing that like you take an x ray of your hand? Yeah. And it shows how much growth you have left. Does it? Yeah. yeah. Something new, didn't it? <laughs> there you go. <laughs> I had loads of growth and, I, and it, I think it went into my spine. It just, when I was meant to grow, it just came out instead. Wow. That's mad. It's, it was just my luck, to be honest. Everything I've tried for my spine has never worked. I'm hoping this is the one. So what? So after the first stop, what was what was the case? What were you like then? After were, the American one. Yeah, the fir- the first time you ever got operated on was it? Were you in in a better place then? Um, yeah. So I had two like ten days after each other. Oof. I know, and they, they broke my ribs and stuff. It was I uh, know it was bad. Oh my god! And then it, what's the recovery it, time like for that one? It's only three months. But you. It, Solid, you like obviously when they are operating on your back, you must be you stuck in bed. Then I suppose are well, you? they get you out of bed the next day. Like they don't like wrap like wrap you in cotton wool. They literally like right get out of bed, and it was horrible. Like I, I'd say the last one was harder physically because of the ribs being broken. Yeah, and this one was just harder mentally. Like going into it, I'd already had two surgeries. I was like, I can't, I can't do it. I was sure. I was like, I'm getting paralyzed. I'm, I'm going to get paralysed. Really? But it went so well. It's weird because obviously when you're, you know what you want from the operation, mm. but you know the risk of you, that you could be paralysed. But isn't it mad that because of the outcome that you want is so, feels so much yeah. more worth the risk that you'll take the risk? It's mad that like, you probably, you're probably like, I wouldn't risk it. 
And everyone on around me well, was saying... Well, you know, I, 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 from what you say and the way you feel, it's about the way you feel, isn't it? Yeah. That's what I'm saying. Favorite. It's like if, if I did feel that bad, I'd think, you know, well, can it feel worse? And I knew that I could have everything I wanted. Like, if it went if well, it went obviously, well. yeah. I could have gone in, though, and he could have started to straighten it. Spinal cord alert could have gone off and he would have had to just fuse it where it was. I, I could have come out the exact same body. Really? Yeah, but it just went so well. My surgeon came out, like, running to my mum and was like, it's gone so well. Because really? he, Yeah, he's never he's never really done surgery like that, where you break it. Bloody hell. I know. Well, he's never really done I'm, it. I'm so complicated. Fuck you, you know, that's mad. It's but just... I tr- you tr- got to trust your surgeon, haven't you? If someone's, like, about to... I mean, you have to, like... Slice you back open. But it's scary, isn't it? You put your life in someone's hands like that. But... I know. Imagine, like... Because I... The day before, I ever think, and I'm like... You know, if you just can't sleep and you just can't get to sleep, there's nothing you can do. Yeah. What if you just couldn't sleep the night before and then he's had like two hours sleep and he's about to chop into my back or something? <laughs> like, oh, if he's having a, he's like drinking the night before or something, he wouldn't. But like, no. it's a lot of trust. You trust him with your life, literally with your life. I know. Like, it could, it could. I he's mean, the best in the UK. Yeah, is he? Yeah. So. That's what you want to hear, though, isn't it? You want to, you want to hear about mm, He's so good. So. If they went, he's he's the second best in the UK. So who's the first? Yeah, no, get me the first. I want the first, not the second best. <laughs> I know. Well, do you know what's weird? When I was fifteen, getting my fusion one booked in mm. before Britain's Got Talent, I had a meeting with my surgeon, and I came out to my mum and I was like, I don't want them to cut me open. I well, just you got didn't a have feeling. No, trust in him. no, and he was so nice. He probably was amazing. Yeah, I was just like said to my mum, I don't, I don't, I don't like. It's like your gut instinct. Yeah. And you've just got to have like trust in them. And you I was only young it then. Could have been, you could have been right, you know, and you could be sitting here with a different story, so. Oh, that wouldn't be nice, would it? <sighs> no. no. So talk to me about Britain's Got Talent, like, and, and obviously you got the golden buzzer, didn't you? Yeah. What that must have been. Because I've obviously watched it and seen your, your face. Sorry, <laughs> I don't. Oh, like, God, you, that's a bane of my life. Is obviously, like, to get the golden buzzer is, like... <laughs> It's, it's insane. It's, it's like a for, free it? pass to the live shows because there's like a round in between, isn't there? Yeah. And I think you could tell by my face that I was shocked. Yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Genuinely. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Because you know, don't you? Like you think. I suppose, obviously, if you just get through, that's that's great. That's amazing. Yeah. But then you've got more rounds to get through. So yeah. You can get to the live shows where actually the public can decide. It's not just four, yeah, four random yeah. people. Yeah, yeah. And the live shows where you want to be, like. It's just yeah. like the whole experience is so fun. I was going to say, because obviously the live shows, even if you don't win, but you're performing to an audience every exactly. week, right? And then yeah. obviously the people at home as well. So that's in And the whole is rehearsal still... process, you get to work with the choreographers. Like, I just loved it. And yeah, in that atmosphere is so fun. Yeah. And I've never done, like, I'd done shows and you know, when I was little, I've done a few like adverts and whatever. Oh, did you? <laughs> Yeah, what? I've done a co-op advert that everyone just loves to like rip into me about. A co-op advert? Yeah. <laughs> what were you so, doing <laughs> so it's like the story is our mums have sent us out to the shops again. And then I like got my bike and I, walk, I, walk, I think I walk out the shop and there's a boy walking in the shop. And he's like, I've got hot cross buns. And I go, mint sauce. But so <laughs> I, do you know mints? No, it's mint sauce, is it? Yeah. I said mint sauce. I was saying the wrong thing the whole day. Oh, really? Yeah. I Is that actually on the advert as well that you're saying it wrong? Sauce. Yeah. <laughs> but like you can't tell, can you? Mint sauce. Then I got home and my mum was like, what are you saying? I was mint sauce. She said it's mint sauce. But I don't think anyone knows. So that was your in- that was your first introduction into like being on TV. And yeah, stuff. I think I was about 13. Really? Yeah. And I just loved it. Did you? Yeah. So you just obviously love performing, obviously, yeah? Yeah, I mean, I've always been, like, loud and, <laughs> like, you know, like, always in dancing was always, like, wanted to be, like, the star. Yeah. Whatever. Um, and then just got an agent. Well, my mom as well, my mom wanted to be an actor. And, you know, when, like, your mom wanted to do it and then they, like, you should act to your kid, to the kids. Really? Yeah. But thankfully for, for her, I just loved it. Yeah. Because now she gets to, like... When doing self tapes, you can just tell she's getting she's behind the camera, but she's getting so into it. Telling you I'm what like, to do. Yeah, and like in the script, like she's acting out. I'm like, you, oh, she would love to be in this. <laughs> <laughs> she, she gets the, she's probably gonna watch. A proper this. proud mum. Yeah, and she, I, I know, I know, she thinks that she's like 
better than me. <laughs> like <laughs> she loves it. She loves it. I know. She so I want to, yeah, I want to do it for her as well and just make her part because she she has. It's not like it's expensive. This like performing industry as well. I would imagine it is. Yeah. She travel like well, you know, like you're traveling always and to auditions that you don't get and like even just dance classes are so expensive. Really. Yeah, but she always shows up. She always finds a way for us. That's yeah. amazing, that, isn't mm. it? Because there's a lot of kids who probably do have the dream, but maybe their parents can't afford to send yeah. them or take them or whatever. No, exactly. But I, I know. Circumstances, but... You can't miss an audition. You just can't. No. Do you audition a lot? Yeah. Do you? Uh, in acting now, in acting stuff, yeah. So is that what you want to do now is acting? Yeah. Well, I, won't, I don't think I could be a professional dancer now. No? With the surgery, no. I doubt it. But I did, was that before my surgery? Yeah, even before my fusion surgery that I had five months ago, I filmed a TV show, like Tin Star. Um, and I, I think it was in 2019 and I f was obs like, oh, just being on set was just, oh, it was just it. so good. Yeah, and that, I was like, okay, this is what I want to do. And I could fully dance then as well. And like, I was still decided like, that is it. Really? That is just, yeah, just, it was two months of filming. That was it. But every single, I had to wake up at 5 a.m. and I was like setting my alarm, like, let's go for like four, four in the morning. Really? Usually people are like, what oh. What was the show called? Tin Star. And what is that? I don't know. Um, Sky that. Atlantic, Tim Roth it is. Do you know Tim uh, Roth? No, I'm not very good with oh, do you know? Do you know Reservoir Dogs? And, and, and Reservoir Pulp, Dogs, Pulp yeah. Fiction. Yeah. So he's in that. Oh, really? The one at the Pulp Fiction, the one at the start with like the gun. Oh, right. Oh, so you were doing with it with him? That's, yeah. I don't know He's what just... my voice has just made a weird noise. I don't know what came up. That's like, him, yeah. Here he is, yeah. You must recognise him. Yeah, I do, yeah. And it was filmed in Liverpool, Tin Star, the season three. Really? Yeah, it's that picture below, yeah. Oh, that's yeah, a that little was... number as well, filming in Liverpool. Oh my gosh. That, yeah, that's like around James Street, like, way. Yeah. Oh but that, So that's what I filmed and it was insane. And then, he, like, he helped me so much. And really? Gave me, like, Told and me have you have I you know. done acting lessons or have you just are you just going for it? I mean, I did drama. Yeah, in school, same. I did Do you drama know, like, in school. Yeah, it's like, oh, what's that bloody poem about the cat? Cat sleep anywhere. Do you know it? <laughs> any table, any chair. I'm a lot older than right. you. Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so not quite acting, but I, I did like classes. But it was basic. Yeah. I've never I liked, done drama. I liked. I picked drama. GCSE. For GCSE only because it was the only lesson that you could piss about in so i picked them and I, I was terrible at like theory and stuff in school because mainly because i was just like i can't do something if you know, i'm not interested in it so all the yeah. writing and all that but drama like oh god i loved it my favorite lesson of the what week what did you get i got an a oh, i got a c <laughs> i got a c really but, right you like i was gonna say you're old then you're not old but well so my gcse's was like 60 percent theory <clears throat> oh was it for drama and dance yeah yeah, I can't remember what mine must have been. Practical. I thought I was shit in my practical as well. No, nah, because you're confident, aren't you? Like, <sighs> that's half of it, isn't it? I suppose so. Yeah. Well, you know you're, well, you're, you're well, an, you, well, you're no, an Apparently not, because you're the one with the A. Well, so maybe you can teach me. That was a long teach time ago. Stuff. That was a long time ago. <laughs> it is fun, like, being able to just <clears throat> be another character. Yeah. Like, in that, I was a drug dealer. Were you? Yeah. You were a drug dealer. I was. <laughs> I got the <laughs> exactly, <laughs> exactly. I think that's what they like, though, because when I keep, like, I look quite <clears throat> sweet. Right. I, like, I feel like I look innocent, and I'm not like around drugs ever. Mm. So then getting to be like that kind of thing was so fun. You know. Well, what yeah. I mean? What's it like playing a character like that? You, like when it's completely out of the norm? Did you find? To it? be fair, she's quite like me. Like she. She sold drugs. <laughs> That's so terrible. <laughs> I went, yeah. <laughs> no, she, she's like, but, and also they wrote the script as they went along and they got to, I was only meant to be in two episodes, but I ended up being, Tim was like, write her in the West, basically. Really? Yeah. And then, so she ended up getting written to be quite like me, like quite cheeky and charismatic, like, quite like, just like cheeky. I was going to yeah. call, I can't call myself charismatic. Yeah, so, okay, but, charismatic. <laughs> <laughs> but do you know what I mean? Like quite cheeky. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like trouble. Um, and then it just ended up being like me, except the drug part. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That was a joke, by the way. Was, was <laughs> no, it was, it, it's called fun playing something like completely 
Yeah. Different. So, so if, do you feel like you've fallen in love more with acting over dancing now? Because oh, I know you've had to in a way, but I suppose you wouldn't. Would you have delved into acting more even if you were able to dance again? I think I would have. I think the thing is I went to dance college. Yeah. And I was like, I'm going to be a dancer. And it kind <laughs> of actually like made me not want to be a dancer because it it was amazing training, but it ruined like my, my fun like dancing because it was so hard. 8 a.m. you're doing like sit-ups and then you're sweating, you're getting told like you're not good enough. And what, in dancing? Yeah. Really? Yeah, they're so harsh on you. And it wasn't fun, it was just hard. And I danced because it was so fun. You know what I mean? It's, it sounds it like it is <clears throat> a tough industry, that dance industry, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And you're at the lowest of the low. Like, it goes like, I'd say it's like actors, singers, and then dancers. Really? Yeah. Just long hours, little pay. But if you love it, then it, it doesn't really matter. But, yeah, it, it did kind of ruin the fun for me because it was so intense and so hard. So now I go to class, and if I mess up, no one's shouting at me. No. It's just fun. Yeah. It's, I'd say acting and dancing is like different kind of love for me. I, like dancing is like, I couldn't live without it because it's just like, it makes me feel free. Yeah. And it's a hobby. Yeah. Now, which yeah. I never thought I'd hear myself say. And then. But do you feel like the pressure's off a little bit with it all now? Because obviously you're not getting told you have to do it. Like that, that, I think so that's it. The pressure's gone with it. So you enjoy it more. Yeah. You can just let go. And that's why I danced in the first place. Yeah. To enjoy it. And then in college, it was like. You know, like, before you're doing the dance, you're like, if I mess up, I'm going to get screamed at. You don't want to, that's not why I dance. Yeah. You know? It's mad, though, isn't it? Because mm. I suppose it's like your form of expression. Exactly. It's it? probably like you with, like, your tattoos, like, on your on your own body. Like, that's how you express yourself. Yeah. Oh, fucking hell. I wouldn't look at these and say, well, not what, good, okay. are they? What are they? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'm just covered in shit. We won't talk about that. Just... Not now? Okay. <laughs> Yeah, these I'm just covered in the thing is when I started tattooing I was I was 18 and I remember Where? I didn't have a single tattoo. Do we could you like do art? Could you draw? Yeah, I've, I've been able to draw my life. Yeah, so is that where it started? <clears throat> yeah, like I've just yeah, all my life I've just been drawing since I was a kid. I just didn't I never understood people who couldn't draw. I didn't know I could draw. I was just good at it. And then when I really got to school, I was just like, you can't is, draw? can no one draw? Like, <laughs> And then we'd be like, you're well good at drawing. I'd be thinking, am I? I just, you're, you're really shit at it. Oh, and so, so you just it. thought it was just normal? Yeah, I thought it was normal. Like like just walking down the street, everyone can do that. I just thought everyone would be able to draw. I can't draw. No, I know. So I was like, yeah. And then uh, I watched some t a tattoo program called Miami Ink. And that's what made me want a tattoo. But I didn't have a single tattoo when I started. Oh, really? So I went in there, blank canvas. And they were like, you can't tattoo anybody else unless you've had a tattoo yourself. So you know Why? what I feel. Because I don't know what pain I'm putting them through. <laughs> So I was like, right, okay. Uh, so then I was just winging it. What if you really didn't want tattoos, but you were so talented? Well, I did want a tattoo. I did want tattoos, but I didn't really know what I wanted. So like, but then they were like... <laughs> now you've got like... Absolutely. Yeah, I'm covered in shit. And then they said to me, you know, if you want to be a tattooist, you've got to sacrifice a leg and practice on yourself. And I was like, fuck. Well, I've no sacrificed way. more have than you that. Done, I've, I've you... done loads. I've done my chest, my stomach. You've done your chest shit. yourself? Loads. Done loads myself. Fair enough. I don't have any tattoos. Yeah. Like, it took me ruining myself to get good at tattooing. Was it worth it? <laughs> Fucking right it was. Do you was. look back at them like that? It's rubbish. Do you know what? I don't even look at them anymore. No. Like, to be honest, I see gaps. Other people see tattoos and I see space. That is cool. So like, 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 that is, I reckon that's how, like, all tattoo artists Yeah, are. so, like, I... I, I and to be, but to be honest, I forget about them. Are you done with them or are you not... Well, I'm done with the pain. I would like to Is get more, but I just can't be bothered. But yeah, I think as you get older, your pain threshold gets worse. Oh, really? Yeah, like, well, mine really? has. Well, I'm just a pussy. Yeah, a big baby. <laughs> I'm terrible getting tattooed, though. Have you got any tattoos? No, no. Did you, would you have a tattoo? Would you ever, is it something no. you've ever wanted? No, I'm not really, I'm not really bothered about it. My no. sister's got like three. Is she? I want, James, I want my boyfriend to get tattoos. But... My name. Yeah. <laughs> you might as well have Please, and then, and then <laughs> if anything ever happens, you're mates, so you can go fix it if you get my name and it doesn't work out. Yeah. Um, no, I love I love looking at them, but I wouldn't have them on myself. Really? Mm. Yeah, some people. Have you got any tattoos? No, but I'm, I'm saying that I love them, but I just I couldn't, I don't know what I'd get. Can't commit. I can't commit. Commitment issues, Perrier. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah, tell me about it. Apparently it's addictive as well. Yeah, it is. Do you know what it is? It's not like people get mistaken here where they think, oh, it's the pain that's addictive. It's not. People have never had the ink before. They get the ink and they see it and they think, 
if they like it and they don't have a bad experience with tattoos where they get a really shit one, mm. once they see something good and think, oh, I might have another one actually because I really like that. I think that's like it's when I got my hair dyed. To do with the pain. I get blonder, I go blonder every time and I'm like, I'm done now. It is a and bit like that. Back, it's a bit like, like a bit the more. only problem is it's permanent. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what puts me off, you know. Yeah. My sister's got some. She's actually got Mersey girls on her foot because she was in it with me. Oh, was she? Yeah. Yeah. Is she older or younger? She's two years older than me. Oh, really? Yeah, but we've danced together. Like, we've been joined at the hip all our lives. So were the other girls in the group, were they actually your friends or were you, how did you form that group? Because we were best friends. All of you? Yeah. So how, how did you form that group through a dance school or did you were you just mates? Um, well, do you, I was gonna, do you want the truth or do you want the story that we tell? Well, we would like the truth at home, <laughs> wouldn't we, people? Well, <laughs> well, we say it's just like, oh, we were all like just at a sleepover and we... Oh, this is going to be... Okay. Um, <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. I don't know what's going on here. So it's you, it's you... not bad. I just don't want people to watch, but it's fine. So <laughs> we we were just like... We say oh, we just started a group because we were all at sleepover, which is true. But it was actually like... We were kind of... Dance was hard growing up and we were kind of like, we were liked at dance school, we were a bit underdogs to like this other group of like girls and we were never quite good enough in dance, us who went on BGT. Oh, right. So at the sleepover and we were like, let's audition, us five. And if we get on, we'll show, like show everyone in that dance school that we are enough, basically, as the underdogs. Well, that's, that's, we're gonna. That's cool, that. Yeah. So you're practically winging it. Oh, and totally. you got the golden buzzer. <laughs> <laughs> it, I don't. It, I can't even fathom it, you know. But yeah, that is mental. I didn't know much. that. Yeah, like, that, I think that makes that story even better. To be honest, that you were just like, right, well, let's let's try and do it together and just wing it. It was. It was. It was like that. a beautiful revenge. <clears throat> do you think that, like, you know, when we were talking before about uh, like the pressures off now that you yeah. don't because there's no there's no like real pressure to it so you're having fun with it yeah. do you think that that's the same situation you had with that with that because oh, like there was no pressure 100%. let's just go and do it and see what happens 100 so you performed better yeah we're like we we were, we were all competitive dancers we were in the same team and team was like you competed every weekend and it was like yeah you, you screamed at really and then with that it was just our best friends yeah. And we, we choreographed it all ourselves and it just didn't matter. Nothing mattered. We just wanted to have fun and that is probably a massive part of it. Yeah. The pressure, like, that's what dancing's about. You know, if, like, I could do an audition piece at home perfectly. As soon as you get in the audition, your turns are off, you're wobbling all over the place. Like, I just want to have fun with it. Yeah. But acting is, like, I wouldn't mind if someone, like, is telling me what to do. Because I just want to learn with acting. But that's but yeah, but th that's that's the thing, isn't it? You're still sort of learning with acting, oh, totally, whereas where yeah. you've been doing dancing for years. Yeah. So it's almost like you know how to express yourself best with it. That's f with no pressure. A hundred percent. And I wouldn't change like the journey for for the world. Yeah. You know, like if if they weren't so strict on us, we wouldn't be good, <clears> and we wouldn't <throat> have ended up on BGT. Mm. And the training was great, especially the ballet was so good. But like now, I just don't want that that pressure at all. I realized when I went to college. Just, it's like, I've done it for like, how old am I? I've done it for 18 years, dancing. Yeah. And I just want to, I just want to do it for fun now. And I am. Yeah. Even, even though I can't do it anymore, I go to class, I watch because of my, because of my surgery. I'm only five months post-op. And then at the end, everyone goes and I get up and have a little boogie with my sister and I can't do anything at the moment, but I, my smile while I'm doing it. Yeah. It's just amazing. And I, I I'm like, that was fun. That really? was so much fun. Yeah. What? How long have they said you're not allowed to do anything for? Now, I know it's been five months, but how long did they suggest? A year, it? I think. A year. Yeah, well, mine was a lot, like, a lot worse than most other surgeries. It's got my six-month checkup next month. Yeah. But I've been pushing it, like... Really? With the dancing a little bit. So I'm just praying. I can't help myself. Yeah. Yeah, and I'm just praying that it's all in place. Yeah. Well, if not, it won't be though because it's ne nothing ever has like been simple with my back. If yeah. if it, if everything just goes to plan, it'll be like a miracle. Do you see like you having more operations and stuff? Or do you think you'll have to? Yeah. I mean, if this if they go if you go back on like next month and they say everything's going great, it's fine. I should be fine. I should be fine. To not then. have to have it another one again. Yeah, because I'm moving. I'm I'm like going to like music festivals and like gigs 
and I'm getting banged about. Like I'm, I'm doing everything normal now. So if it's still in place after like six months of doing stuff normal, yeah, it should be all right. But I just don't think I could do another one. You know, no, it, like mentally. The, yeah, I was gonna say the the mental strain of it because, like you said, it's like what three, four, five months, whatever. Yeah, but then like it's like three, four, five months before the surgery that you're building it up, and every single day it was on my mind before it. Really? Well. Yeah. I was like a mess, but no one knew. But I was like, yeah, because it is like hard. Because at the end of the day, it's it's as much everyone's around to support you. I would expect. Them. Yeah, totally. But it's you that's got to go through it by yourself in lots of ways, haven't you? Yeah, and I don't think people really understand. Like that's why <clears throat> what helped me a lot was speaking to people who had been through it yeah. already and got through it. Like speaking to my friends and family is great, but it's just like. Like, oh, it's horrible. It was the, and the hospital care was terrible. Like it was, really? I think it was like, it was traumatic for me. Yeah. And it, I've like blocked it out of my life that this surgery, it was like something about it was just so traumatic. Really? Yeah. I just couldn't do it again. No. No. Do you know what? This shows like what a strong person you are though, because it's almost like, I mean, being stuck in that position like that for that amount of time, it's like, You've got to have some... I mean, you're alone with your thoughts. Totally. So you've got to be strong to get through it. Well, and no one was allowed to visit me in hospital, you know. Really? Well, it was COVID, and but I was just like... I was in the adult world as well, so I wasn't allowed anyone. And I just turned 20, and when I found out there's no visitors, I was like, how am I going to do this? It was an hour a day. And my mom, she's a legend, phoned them and, and fought, fought. Because I was like, I wasn't mentally okay so then I couldn't physically recover yeah so she was like if I'm coming in for an hour yeah and I've got COVID well she tested before she came in but she said if I've got it I'm gonna spread it in that one hour and I'll sit next to her bed and I won't go anywhere else and, and she fought for it and she was allowed I think she was allowed to be there one o'clock till six o'clock by the end really it's when she was leaving I was just like 6 p.m just it's horrible yeah I was gonna say it's, it's terrible like- what do you do? Like, do they have like the, what do they have there? For you? Do they have like TVs and stuff? Or you? Well, you're so high most of the time, so you just uh, like sleeping. Really? <laughs> yeah, like the morphine. I could press the morphine button every five minutes. Really? Yeah. So I slept a lot, um, and then well, you could press it. I pressed it myself. You're allowed to press it yourself. But once you have pressed it, you can't press it for five minutes, and then five every- minutes. Five minutes, it was a lot. <laughs> every five minutes, fucking hell. Uh, yeah, and I remember they they came up to me and they were like. The the day, the worst day is when they're like, we're taking the morphine button off you. It's like, no. <laughs> we're no. taking this off you. Oh my God, this sounds like I am a drug dealer. Like in <laughs> a thing here, I promise I'm not. But it, it it's really good pain relief. And I remember the day they came, they were like, we're taking this off you today. I'd been on it for about two weeks, to be fair. I, I tried to stop pressing it as much yeah. because it's so bad when you come off it. And like, you've got half an hour left. And I was like, Five times. How many? How many times? I was like pressing it so much, and they were taking it off me, and I was like, "Bye bye." And then the worst thing I ever did that because it just ruins your body and mentally, it's just ridiculous. Like after, yeah, when it's gone, I I like went white off the meds and stuff. Really, I couldn't hack them. Yeah, I had to just go cold turkey off them. Mm. But yeah, so oh, and there's no TVs. So like when you're not on the morphine. And you, you, what, what is there, for, like, t- tell me it's not just magazines on the side. Crosswords, me and my mum did. <sighs> L- like, genuinely <sighs> no, like, televisions. Obviously, in America there was, because it was private. This is, this wasn't. And I think I, I think I just watched, do you know Modern Family? Best show ever. Yeah. I, like, watched that on my phone. Oh, did you? Yeah. And then yeah. when I was on the ward, because I was in a private room for a while, and then I went on the ward... And I had to like put headphones in while I listened and like trying to sleep with headphones and otherwise people were like, do you know what I mean? It was, it was horrible. Yeah. So bad. Yeah. And you say what, you were there for three months? No. So I was only, so he was like, if everything goes to plan, you'll be in hospital two weeks. This was like a few days before my surgery. He said, that's so unlikely that you'll be in for two weeks. Like you're going to get an infection. Most likely you're not going to have like, okay, no. he's got to say it, I guess. Yeah. And he was like, the longest you'll be in is like a month to two months. And then I was in for two weeks. And then they, I remember my surgeons came up to me about four days post-op. I was thinking I was like wriggling my legs. And he was like, oh, you can move your legs really well. Well done. And I said to him, I'm, I'm up walking. Like, 
my catheter's out, I'm going to the toilet on my own. And they were like, they they have never seen that. Like ever. Really? Yeah, they were like looking at each other like, how is this girl? Like, how is she getting over? Functioning. Yeah, she wanted to get out of there, I think. Really? Yeah, I told like uh, So what were you out with her then after a couple of weeks? Two weeks. And they Fucking were like, hell, they were really? like, but I did. What were you going to say? So then, no, then I got an infection. I was there for another I know I did get an infection, but I, I kind of wanted to get out so bad that I was like, they're like, are you still getting like dizzy spells? And I was like, no. And then they were like, <laughs> <laughs> they were like, do you still need your like overriding meds in the night? And I was like, no. I literally had them the night before. But I just wanted to get out. Fucking hell. I, you know what? We made it. And then I, I should have been in. I should have stayed another week, I think. Because I did have to go back to the hospital like a few, because I was in a little hotel next to the hospital for a few days. Mm. And I got like readmitted for a day thinking I had like blood clots and stuff. But I ended up not. I was like, I'm fine, I'm fine, I'll go home. I should have been in, but Such I just a, couldn't do it. Like an up and down roller coaster, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. My uh, whole life has been. I bet it's frustrating, isn't it? Yeah. And it's like, it's because everything I've ever tried, like all the back braces. Nothing's ever worked, and but I've had so many highs, yeah. And I probably wouldn't change it, you know, having no. it. No, because it's like, like BGT and like all the other people that have scoliosis that I've been able to like connect with is just so worth it. I was gonna say, obviously, you know, going back to before, you say you you can talk to your family and stuff, but I don't suppose it, there's anything like talking to someone who knows exactly what no. you're experiencing, like other people who've been through it, is there? No, not at all. I probably did people's head in. Really? Like I was, I added these girls on Snapchat who had the same surgery with the same surgeon, and I was like, every day I was like, does this get better? Yeah. Asking them so many questions, they didn't mind at all. But that's the one thing that, like, I held on to. They've done it. Then they're, they're like out with their friends now. So it, I was like, I will get there. Yeah. It just doesn't feel like you're ever gonna get there. No. No, never. Especially when you're in that situation, in that environment, the days drag. Mm -hmm. Even I mean, when I got home, yeah, I was just like, woke up, took about five pills, went downstairs, just lay on the couch all day in agony. Just, when does it get better? Yeah. And then it just does. Yeah. It's mental torture though for a while, isn't it? It's just terrible. It was worse mentally than physically, which is bizarre. Yeah. But it was. Because if people had seen what you'd been through physically, they'd be like, how would it be worse mentally? But yeah, it, exactly. it's But the mental game's half the battle. Couldn't even walk from like here to the end of the room. That's crazy. So did you have to like learn to walk in that again? Yeah. What Just was that terrible. like? Do you know what? Well, I grew five inches. Oh, you, you did height. grow this time? <laughs> yeah, this time, yeah. Um, so, because it, it's fully, it was like that and I was straightened up. Yeah. So, when so I you first grew five I was like, inches. I go. Yeah. Wow. Five inches. So I was five foot and now I'm five foot four. And it's all in the torso. Yeah. That's mad, that. But the walking was okay. It was sitting up. I couldn't sit. Yeah. Just couldn't do it. It was just terrible. And that my pain management's so bad. Like, Is this a be the best you've felt now, like, in terms of how you look and physically in terms of the pain and stuff like yeah so i don't really get any pain anymore really there's like twinges and a bit of nerve pain as the nerves come back but and the my new body i don't think i'm ever going to get used to it really no my sister says because i was always so jealous of my sister's body she all she did is complain about hers and now she's like you are like so much prettier than me now and is, that, stuff. is that what she says yeah she's fuming <laughs> but i said ali this is like 18 years of like hating myself so it's finally it's, that's so mad isn't it it's so sad that you felt like that for so long but like i mean to come out the other side like you have and how mm. you feel now i mean that and like, you know i tried so hard to like it yeah like it's not like i was just like no i don't like it like i tried to love to love my curves i had curves in the wrong places i had the hunchback but i tried to love them but i just couldn't yeah and i would never have been happy do you not think no i was i was like when i was deciding whether to get the surgery it was like is it really worth the risk but i just knew if i didn't get it i always would have thought what if yeah what if, like i could have everything i ever wanted yeah it's just i'm grateful it's just oh just amazing i'm never gonna get used to it Really? Yeah, no. It's nice to see, like, how, like, satisfied you are now with yeah. it all. And, like, it annoys me because people always say, like, oh, you've wasted Simon's money. Like, Who says that? People on Instagram and stuff. Oh, fuck them. And, like, do you regret, like, 
Trolls then? Yeah. Ah. Oh. You probably get them yourself sometimes. Ah, fuck them off. Trolls. Just delete them. I know. They're just idiots at home, aren't they? Just got mm, nothing better totally. to do. Totally. But like Simon Sergey gave Simon Sergey <laughs> <laughs> gave me like two, three years of like dancing that I never would have got. Yeah. And then it was time to get what I wanted, you know, now. And it felt like. Yeah. I think it's mental that people that like you get trolled. Oh, it's, it's just it's like disgusting. That. You're like, I was going to say someone's name then. Someone I know, she's literally an adult. I'm like scrolling on Facebook and she tr- like, it's trolling people who have been on BGT. And it's, it's someone like, you know? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. She, so she, and it's like, she's an adult and she's like, didn't think anything of this, like could be much better. I'm like, what have you not got anything better to do with your life? That is mad. I remember I, like a few years ago on Tattoo Fixers, I tattooed um, a girl called Vicky, who was the girl who lost her leg in Alton Towers. Do you remember? Yeah. Him, him like that. And um, yeah. And she was telling me that she was getting trolled. And I was like... How can you troll her? How on what earth? What is wrong with people? Like, how on earth? When someone has something like this, horrific, or they've got disabilities or anything like that, how I don't understand where your mind has to go to sit there well, and Well, they must that. be pretty sad in themselves. Well, that's the only you know thing, what? isn't it? Do you, have you ever got, got hate? Have you ever like got one specific thing that like people... What they, they say to me? Yeah. Uh, I, no, not really. I don't think so. I don't know. I, to be honest, I I laugh at it. Like, because, like, I think it's like when you know yourself, no one can really touch you. Mm, well, I, it never got to me until, like, if people, people like, people, well, here's one. They were like, you're lying about your condition. Like, <laughs> or people like, you can't dance. They didn't bother me, but it was when they, it's like, have you seen my back hump? <laughs> what air? <laughs> yeah, Photoshop, what sure. What's wrong with these um, weirdos? But it got to me when it, they said, um, it was like about my appearance. Like people said that I look like Mike Wazowski. Do you know, because my body was so short mm. and my arms hung really low because my body was short and I did look like Mike Wazowski. But you don't say that. And it was on one TikTok. You know, you on TikTok? Recently, yeah. Welcome to the club. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> like I was scrolling, every single comment was Mike Wazowski. She looks like Mike Wazowski or Slender Man was one. And like, it got to me. Did it? Yeah, badly. It's just horrible. It's just so nasty. Yeah, it's just... And then you go in their bio on their account and it's like, spread positivity. It's like, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> uh, yeah. Right. The, the, the ones who've got like, be kind and all that and in, their, yeah, in their bio and, and they're the ones that are trolling people. Yeah, I don't, I don't understand. I don't understand when people troll me and they're following me. I don't get it. <laughs> I'm like, it says you're following me. Why are you following me if you, you want to give me a bit of shit? <laughs> they love it, don't they, some people? And they follow people just to... Just to give a bit of shit. Yeah. Don't, I never will get it. But it, it's part of it, isn't it? Yeah. I was going to say, you know, when obviously from being on Britain's Got Talent yeah. and being in the public eye, did you did you get that then? Is that when you got all this trolling or do you still yeah. get it now? No, not now, you know. No. Get a few people, some people just being weird in the DMs. Mm. Just, just like, do you know what people did in my school? Like a group of lads made a hate, I hate Julio account. It's so weird. When you're in school? This was like, yeah, f- like straight after BGT. Not anymore. They're all like, oh, they all love me now, don't they? But trying to be my friends now, but straight after BGT, when I was in school with them, they were like, made it hate Julia accounts. And I was just like, what on earth are you doing? They spent a lot of time thinking about me clearly, and I was just. <clears throat> so a lot. Not it, it, about do you know what? It's, it's, I remember like when I was younger, and like your mum and dad would say, Oh, they're just jealous or whatever, and you think, how are they jealous of me? They're not jealous of me. Only as you get older, you go, no, that's exactly yeah, right. what it is. Do you know because what's something's so, yeah. going on in their life where they're they're it, they're they're looking at you and they're envious. Yeah. So they they be nasty to you to try and make me feel better about yeah. themselves. People do that all the time. There was someone who actually messaged me on Instagram. Someone who was part of like the hate account in my school. A few years later, he messaged me and said, I just want to apologize for like being nasty to you in school it, it, and he said it I was jealous because he really? said I wanted to be an actor and you were doing everything I wanted to do and he, he literally yeah respect it though so yeah. like saying it yeah. but he admitted it was jealousy and it was like it's mad that isn't it play. yeah I just couldn't be jealous of me mates I'm like big enough. jealousy's a horrible trait I mean you can't help it <clears throat> but there's ways to like deal with it handle it mm. you know what I mean yeah, I don't think, I, I don't, I honestly don't think I've ever been jealous of anybody. 
Okay, but you're like so you you're happy in yourself. Yeah, I think that's you know it. I mean? There must be I just I just accept that I'm me and that's it. <laughs> I'm not gonna be anyone else. <laughs> am I? Change for no one now. <laughs> You're not jealous of chefs because you can't cook. Well, yeah, maybe. That's a lie. Yeah, yeah I am. I'm yeah, de- jealous I'm, of Gordon yeah. Ramsay. And I'm, jealous of, I'm jealous of both of you because you can drive. <laughs> oh, so you're starting driving lessons? Next month. Next month. But it's good because I can now see over the wheel. Now I'm tall. So I Is that why you haven't been able to drive? I like to, to say that's why, but I just couldn't be Could you have bothered. been able to drive before? Um, I would have had to have a cushion, definitely. Yeah. But I would have been able to drive, yeah. Yeah. But I'm just sick of like relying on people for lifts, yeah. you know. Did you start lessons when you were like 17 straight 17. away? Started, yeah. Yeah, Did I you couldn't. Pay? Pardon? Did you pay for your lessons? Yeah, uh, no, uh, I can't remember. I think, no, my mum and dad, no, I think my mum and dad paid for my lessons, and then, but I saved and bought my own car. Amazing, yeah. yeah. See, because I like my mum and dad when I turned 17 weren't like his lessons, so I just didn't do it. I was just like just yeah. getting on with my life, and then it, it wasn't until I wanted it that I'm like, hey. Yeah. This is ridiculous now. Do you know what I did? Revised for my theory. Did you revise for your theory? Did you revise? But, but I, do you know what? It's, I know this sounds mad, but it was that long ago. I can't remember. Old, <laughs> old, is this old. I'm 32. <laughs> it was a long time ago. Um, I revised. This was like last like a few months ago. I revised so much. Like I'm a little perfectionist. Went like went to the theory. It was so ready. And then I walked in and they were like, what's your name? It was like Julia. And they said I got the wrong day. And I'd revised and crammed, crammed it <laughs> for that day. And then they were, it's not even till next month. So I've, got, I've forgotten everything. Oh, good. And I, was, I know. That's heavy, that. It's so difficult. I was so ready. Oh. I know. How did you find dealing with fame after Britain's Got Talent? Because you will have got a lot of fame. Over yeah. Because, didn't you? Like it was, cause, I mean, they're diehard fans that watch that show as well, mm, aren't they? So yeah. you must have got a lot of, I mean, I don't know, was it? It was like over, everywhere overnight, and, isn't it? Yeah. It's, really? Yeah. yeah. It's heavy, isn't it? Yeah, it was like, was yours overnight or was it like gradual? Um, I feel like it's different when it's overnight. It was, I don't know. Well, we, we, we'd we been filming the show before, well, obviously way before it was even anyone knew it was yeah. coming out on TV. And then when it did come out. It just blow. Like we, we filmed the pilot in like the set, say it was like the September. And then it was supposed to go out as an ep- one episode, but the channel loved it that much. So they commissioned it to be oh, a series. Amazing. So it never went out. And they just filmed the series. So it didn't go right. out till the following, like, six months later. So for six months, I knew this TV show was coming out. But really, normal, but really. obviously I didn't know, didn't think it was going to be, I yeah. didn't think it was going to be that big. I don't know, really. Didn't that know. Was like, that was like, it's like us, you, you, people could either hate you or love you. Yeah. But it just, it worked. And then so straight after it aired, so we, yeah, we filmed it. And then it didn't come out until I think, like, three months later. Oh, really? Yeah. So Were you we, allowed to tell people that you'd been no, on that? Oh, yeah, to keep no. that quiet, yeah. Yeah, we we that told obviously really a few hard. people. Yeah, we told our dance teachers. We were like, oh yeah, we we went on BGT. Did it go well? We were like, and you'd yeah. got the golden buzzer. Yeah. Oh my god, you couldn't tell her. No, and they they were like, did it go well? We were like, yeah. And then they said when it came out, I knew it went well because like we could just tell we all had like a spring in our step. But then it aired, and then two days later we're in London on this morning, and then you in in like my emails you we had like people and like saying can you do this interview with us for this paper and we had to run everything by bgt first mm. before we did it um for like a certain period of time and after the show and it was just inundated like it was just amazing just do an interview and then interview then a photo shoot i remember did like i think three photo shoots in one day but i just loved it loved it yeah moment. and my mom is so like she keeps me on the ground so i'd never i'd never like get too like get it to your head, head in the clouds. Go yeah, no, she kept, she kept me on the ground, and I was just if it was a whirlwind, mm. and I feel like it's slowed down now with COVID, which is yeah. rubbish. Um, but I, I'm just still determined because I don't want to. I want to do like you know, you just do what you love every single day is your yeah. job. Yeah, that's what I don't want to be working in a bar. No, no, and I, do, I want work to not feel like work, and it just didn't. Yeah, it was just insane. That's the thing is though, you know, I've, t- I've had a lot of guests on here who talk about things like this and, you know, one thing I just always say is just don't quit. Just don't mm. quit. Just don't quit. You'll win at some point, whether it could be next year, it could be 10 years down the line. Well, everyone quits Yeah. along the way. And, and I, as I keep not quitting, people are quitting. Yeah. I just won't. Yeah. I'll work. I'll work in a bar I have. I, yeah. I, have a, I have a normal job now and I'll just keep working while auditioning until you get that. 
That's how the people that who make thing. it make it. <laughs> well, I don't. I don't really. Everyone's like, "What's your plan B?" People, in my, someone in my work said, "Like, oh, you never get. Oh, it's very like you're not going to make it as an actor, are oh, yeah. you?" So, but they say every like, person who ever made it as an actor has had people say that to them. Because yeah. remember that when people say stuff like that to you, they're only putting their limiting beliefs that they've yeah. got over themselves onto you. Yeah, because. Just because you don't think you can become an actor. They're doesn't sitting mean I at can't. a desk all day, yeah. But I, t- I just won't stop. And it's like, yeah, it's hard. And it's like, I've done so many auditions recently. Get recall after recall after recall. And then you don't get the part. And it's like, yeah. okay, well, yeah, I hold on to the recalls. I must be doing, you know, I must be doing something right. But not just that. Like, you know, you could get not back, not back, mm. not back, not back forever. And then. Boom. Yeah, she's right for this. Timing's everything as well, you know. Yeah, Timing definitely. is, I've found that a lot. Like, timing is a lot. Like, you know, if I'd have, you know, if, if Tattoo Fix had asked me to do that five years previous, I wouldn't have been a good enough tattooist, wouldn't it? Wow, well, yeah. Because I was like, five years better It happened off. at the perfect time for you. Yeah. Yeah. It's like, uh, that was me when I was deciding when to have this surgery. It was like, I'm going to have, I'm going to need three months out. And I thought, like... You just like I was doing an audition for the new Waterloo Road, mm. and then I think I I think I got to like the final five for like the head girl. It's not out yet. Yeah. Um, and if I got that, I wouldn't have been able to have my surgery. And it was like, what? Which one? Which yeah. one? And I didn't get it. And I was like, do you know what? Like you're supposed to have the surgery. Yeah. I was gutted. I was so gutted, but I wouldn't be here now. But and- you know, you might ha- like now that you've had the surgery and you feel the way you do. Because you're given, you you feel more confident. You, you give off more confidence. You'll do better at something. Yeah, exactly. And that could all stem from the fact that that wasn't going to work out for that reason. One hundred percent. Things are supposed to fall into Everything place. Everything does happen for a reason. So and if I'd have filmed that, it would have aired, and it would have been a big whirlwind audition, 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 yeah. and I would have had to stop the whirlwind for surgery. So it's done now. Yeah, it's, it's out of the way. Never again. That's it. And you, mm. you know, if, like I said, if you just keep, just keep doing your thing, and I will, I it'll will. eventually come off for you, for you. Definitely, I reckon it will. Um, but yeah. Hopefully, hopefully. Thank you very much for coming on. It's been good. Thanks for having You've been me. Wicked. And, um, I forgot we were filming then. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, but it's been good. So thanks for coming on. Yeah, thank you for having me. That's good.